Welcome to week two, youngins. So this week, we are going to start focusing on historical skills and how to think like a historian. Kind of like last week, we were focusing on geographical skills and how to think like a geographer. So uh, in your first assignment for the year, you were asked to define geography, and you were also asked to define history. And looking at your responses, most people uh, believe that history refers to the past, or history is the study of the past. And those are close, but they're not really, they're not 100% uh, accurate. When we're talking about history, what we're talking about is the record of the past. When we're studying history, we are studying this record of the past. It's impossible for us to truly study the, the real ac actual past because it's, it's past. All we have to go on are the records that have been left by, who, that have been left behind by the past. So when we're talking about records, we're talking about documents, so things that have been written down by, the, by people in the past and that have survived to the present day that allow us to read and study them to gain an understanding of the past. And it also refers to artifacts. The, uh, this, this gets more into the field of like uh, archaeology. Uh, so these would be things like ancient tools uh, that left by uh, like me the Mesopotamians or the Egyptians or older Native American civilizations. These would be uh, part of those artifacts that would be found and left behind by them would also be a part of that historical record. Now, this is not to say that like there is no such thing as an objective history or there is no such thing as an objective past. Of course there is. Uh, but we have to be intellectually honest with ourselves as historians and admit that we can't truly study that past. The best we can hope for is to study the record left behind by it and try and use that to develop an understanding and an interpretation of what the past was like. This is why if you look at professional historians, you'll find disagreements over certain issues. Uh, historians will disagree a lot uh, over various things. Uh, things like the overall effects and impacts of certain policies, the causes or more significant causes of events and things of that nature. So uh, we've discussed history, we've gone over historical interpretation and how it's based off of the documents and artifacts that form the record of the past. And we need to look now at the main tools that historians use. Uh, what we call sources. Um, professional historians base their interpretations, they base their histories off of these sources. This, these are the things that we have to go on. And there are two main types of sources historians use. There are primary sources, this should hopefully be a review, but there are primary sources which are first-hand accounts uh, from people who uh, lived during the time period they're writing about, uh, witnessed an, an event that took place or interacted with people who were involved or something like that, and they're writing their firsthand accounts of the period. So types of things that would be primary sources, these would be things like journals, diaries, letters and correspondence between people. But primary sources could also include things like government docker or government records and official documents or things like that. It could even include uh, photographs, as long as they're photographing the period in question. But photographs as well would be considered primary sources. Uh, also, could consider a primary source an autobiography or an interview with a person from the period where you're asking them about the period. Uh, that interview, you're talking to the person, and basically they're reflecting on their personal experiences with that time period or with that historical event. And with an autobiography, it is a biography written by the person it's about. And since that person's reflecting on their own experience, they are kind of a primary source for their own life. I can't. It's hard to think of a who would be a better primary source for your life than you. Uh, but the bulk of what we're going to look at in this class 
are secondary sources. Now, secondary sources are not first-hand accounts. These would be things like textbooks or books written by historians talking about the past. Uh, these would also be things like articles and, newspa and newspapers or scholarly journals uh, talking about the past. That and These would be written by people that did not directly experience the event in question. Uh, so... Um, as I said, the main thing we're going to focus on in this class, the main type of sources we're going to be using are secondary sources for a couple of reasons. For one, it's really hard to truly understand, analyze, and really get understand the significance of a primary source if you don't have a basic understanding of the overall narrative of the period to begin with. Uh, for example, um, it, it's hard to understand the significance of, like, the Declaration of Independence, if you don't understand the general history of the American Revolution and the time period it was written, um, it's hard to really understand or get that significance. So it's the same, the same goes for world history as well. Um, we're not really going to be looking a whole lot at like uh, primary sources from the Renaissance, for example, because we would need to know what the Renaissance was before we could really do that. Um, not to say we're not going to look at primary sources. We are, but most of the time we'll be working with secondary sources. So uh, your assignment for today, you are looking at hypothetical sources that, that, that would exist. Uh, basically, you'll get a brief description of what this source is. You'll have to categorize that source as either a primary source or a secondary source. And... Uh, then explain why you think this would be a primary source or a secondary source. If you have any questions, uh, you should know the drill by now. Email me, show up to office hours, yada, yada, yada. Um, have a good day, guys, and let's make this a good week.